Okay. So, so next I want to talk about the, the meta learning aspect and uh, another hypothesis um, that's important to deal with how the world changes. So meta learning uh, is, is something really hot and cool these days, but actually started uh, several decades ago. Uh, my brother and, and I have been working on this in the early uh, 90s and actually was uh, Sami's uh, PhD subject. Um, and, and what it's about really is about having multiple timescales of learning or multiple timescales of um, iterative uh, optimization like uh, computation. So typically you would have an inner loop like normal learning and an outer loop like evolution, which optimizes whatever the inner loop is, is producing. And so in this way, we can uh, talk about uh, the uh, evolution outer loop with individual learning in the loop, or we can talk about uh, in the life of an individual, lifetime learning as the outer loop and individual adaptation to a new environment as, as the uh, fast time scale. And the thing that's cool about meta learning is it allows us to explicitly optimize for generalization. And in particular, it can be used to explicitly optimize for out of distribution generalization, right? If the agent sees multiple environments, um, we, can, we can train its uh, slow timescale meta parameters so that it will generalize well to new uh, environments. Now, uh, th there's the question of, uh, that I mentioned earlier, what kind of hypothesis can we make about these changes in distribution? And because underlying physics um, means that uh, typically an action by an agent is going to be localized in space and time, uh, we can assume that the changes uh, in distribution correspond to or are caused by or the consequence of an intervention by an agent that uh, acts on just a few causes or a few mechanisms that relate variables uh, with each other. So this extends a, a hypothesis that was proposed by uh, Shopkov and collaborators of uh, independent mechanisms. And he, what they mean here is informationally independent, meaning that the, 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 the relationships between variables, the mechanisms, the conditional distributions uh, are independent in the sense that what you learn from one doesn't tell you anything about another one. And so if something changes in the world, one of these mechanisms changes, one of the conditional distributions corresponding to, say, one of the nodes in this graph, uh, it's like a graphical model, for example, if something like this changes due to an intervention, um, you only need to adapt the, the part of the model that corresponds to the change. So, for example, if I uh, put on some sunglasses, uh, the data that I'm getting at my, uh, on, uh, on my retina is, is very, very different. But it can be explained by a tiny change, which is this one variable that you know, changes its value from uh, zero to one. So uh, that, that's really interesting because if we have such a hypothesis and we have a good representations of uh, the interactions between all those high-level variables, then uh, very few bits would be needed to account for those changes. And, and thus very few observations needed to uh, uh, adapt or infer what, what has happened. And thus we can get good out of distribution generalization. So, uh, so the idea is since uh, out of distribution generalization can be uh, um, uh, obtained if we have the right decomposition of knowledge, uh, we can use out of distribution performance as a training signal for factorizing knowledge. Okay, so uh, we did some work in that direction. Uh, there's a paper called the Meta Transfer Objective for Learning to Disentangle Causal Mechanisms, where we apply this idea in a very simple settings where you have just two variables A and B, or um, uh, say four variables A, B, X, Y, and um, A is the cause of B, but the learner doesn't know, and you might observe just X and Y, which are simple uh, like rotations of A and B. And it turns out that uh, if you have the right decomposition, if you, um, um, if you look at uh, the, the right way of factorizing the joint distribution between A and B, the one in which um, we have P of A, the cause, multiplied by P of B given A um, for, for the effect given the cause, then uh, when there's a change in distribution due to an intervention on the cause, the, the learner that has the right model uh, will adapt much faster, doesn't need as much data. So the x-axis on this thing is the amount of data that the learner needs to recover from a change in P of A. 
And it turns out that you can also use this to learn about uh, how to map the x, y, which is things like the pixels that don't have a causal structure, to the a's and b's that, that are the high-level variables that have causal structure. Because, again, uh, the same remark as I did earlier with uh, the consciousness prior, which does not apply on the pixel level, the assumption that uh, uh, these high-level variables are causal does not work on, on things like pixels. And you can't really find a pixel that's a cause of another pixel, right? So it's not the right space for doing things. Um, we had a more recent paper called Learning Neural Causal Models from Unknown Interventions, where we extend these ideas to larger graphs uh, in such a way that we can avoid the exponential explosion of the number of graphs that need to be considered by parameterizing uh, in a factorized way the distribution over graphs. And one of the things we find is that in order to really facilitate the, 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 the learning of the causal structure, uh, the learner should try to infer what was the uh, intervention, on which variable uh, was the change uh, performed, and uh, that's something we do all the time. Like uh, most of the time, at least my brain is trying to figure out what was the cause of what I've uh, observed uh, or that explained the change that I, I'm seeing. And so we, we tested these ideas on, on, on various uh, small graphs and we were able to find that uh, actually this, this works quite well and better this, uh, than the uh, uh, commonly used causal induction methods. Uh, but more importantly, the, the way that we are attacking this problem is something that's very deep learning friendly in the sense that we just define uh, an overall objective, uh, some regularization terms, usual things, and we do gradient descent on it. 